Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Garth Richards for MachineMinuteTips.com and today I'm going to show you, if you're a beginner, to Native Instruments Machine, how to use plugins. Now, that would be how to install them, how to organize your VST library, also how to use and navigate through Native Access. I'll cover everything there is to do with plugins within Machine. So, let's get right into it. We're going to start with native access and this is the app you will use to download your uh, native instruments products and the way to do that is open native access and you do not see your product in not installed then you would go ahead and add the serial number from your account or email once you've added the serial number your product will populate in the not installed part of na native access. From there, you would go ahead and install. You just click install here. Now, if you have purchased your product from say native instruments, and usually, for example, if I've purchased uh, an expansion directly from native uh, instruments, usually the product will show here also without me having to add the serial number. You can hit refresh if it doesn't show or once it does you then go ahead and hit install now i'm just going to go into the settings of native access and as you can see i have some locations for where i want things to go so downloads go to my downloads folder application location uh, goes in the applications folder and my content location is where all my expansions samples instruments that sort of thing will go in this location which is my external hard drive i've got a an ssd a two terabyte ssd and i plan to get a bigger one i believe two terabyte definitely fill up pretty soon you've got some products that are you know like this one here session horns pro is about 30 gigs and there's session strings pro 2 35 gigs the bigger the hard drive you can get i wouldn't make the investment because these libraries are absolutely huge now in machine we're gonna go into preferences and then we're going to locate plugins and as you can see i've got all my plugins here you can see some of them are unchecked because these are ones that i do not want to show up in my plugins menu within machine and if you go over to the locations tab it will tell you the location of where these vsts are now you get a choice to where you want your vsts to be and this normally happens when you install a new vst onto your computer it will ask you for the location and machine will run a scan on your computer when it loads to search for VSTs that are on your computer. So you don't have to tell machine where to look for your VSTs. It will do a complete scan and it will locate your VSTs. And once it does do that, it will populate them here in preferences. If for whatever reason your VSTs are not showing up, you can always hit rescan here or you can hit add if you have a new location that you want to add to machine. So if you go back to the manager, you can also hit uh, rescan on this page. And it also gives you the option to use NI audio units. And it also gives you the option to use the latest versions of NI plugins. Your libraries now consist of your expansions, um, your contact libraries, etc. And those are in library factory. And like I say, it's mostly stuff that's related to native instruments in the user tab these are locations of libraries located in this user tab here and especially i will touch on this uh, maybe in a greater deal at another time but if you choose to install your content onto your computer when you first use machine for the very first time and then at a later date you decide that you want to change location maybe to an external like what i mentioned in native access you can do this here by selecting add and then doing the same in native access so they speak to one another um, and i think that's a good idea because like i say these libraries nick expansions you know will add up over time and in some cases especially with my older macbook pro 
it slowed it down immensely because I had hardly no space on the hard drive. And so often what happens is that with memory swapping, the computer will look for space, free space on your, uh, on your hard drive to use as memory. And when it can't do this, because there's hardly any space left on your hard drive, then you run into problems where you get bottlenecks and what have you. So we're just gonna go ahead and load a random VST onto a group. Usually you would have an instrument or maybe a sample on the first slot here. So I could go to, oh, I could just add anything really. I just add this sample here as the window. And then as you can see, it's on the first slot here. I can add a VST here. Let's go to, I don't know, oh, it's Nectar 3. So now you can see Nectar 3 is loaded and the second slot on the pad. Doing it this way would be unique to that pad. So any um, param parameters you change within the VST will only affect that sound, the sample, what have you, which is on that pad. Now, if you want to do it at a more global level, then you would add, um, and you can just cut here and then go to group and then just paste it. So you've now moved the BST from the pad level, which would only affect the individual sound or sample to a global level, which would be on the group itself. So if you had all of your pads, all of your 16 pads with sounds on them, and you put that VST on the group level, whatever you change on that VST will affect all the sounds and samples in that group. The same would apply to on the master. So you can do the same here. and you open your VSTs by clicking the arrow here. This is more on a global level. Every single group, every single sound or sample will be affected by whatever you do on the VST, on the master. So these are some of the cool ways you can use VSTs on actual pads themselves. I'll go ahead and show you an example. I just loaded one of my beats. However, I want the beat to fade out. Using the method I just showed you, by putting a VST on the first slot of another group, I'm able to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new group called Fade Out. On the Sound tab, the first slot I'm going to put an EQ. Now I'm gonna go back to the groups and change their outputs to the EQ and sample. Go to group, go to the connections tab, go to output, audio. The master is gonna to go to the EQ. I'll do the same for the drums. Group, output, master audio, EQ. The bass, same thing. Even got a crackle there, but I'll just take this off. Okay, so now that we've got everything all connected up, I'm going to show you how we do the automation and you just click and hold outside of the knob. If you're using a mouse, that is. If you're using a controller, it would be uh, shift and then you would turn the knob. Um, and then that's how the automation is recorded using the hardware controller. But if you're using a mouse, then you would do it this way. So I'm gonna play back my uh, beat now and then I will automate the fade out manually by clicking here on the outside of this ring and it has to sort of like highlight. That means I'm on the, the outside side of the ring, hold down and as you can see, the automation lane appears at the bottom. So just undo that and then just, just start the automation now. So that's a pretty cool way to create fade outs um, in machine. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just drawing a line that you would find in a DAW. If this helps you in any way, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and share this content with whoever you think this will help. And I'll be seeing you in the next one.